As some of you may know, one of my hobbies is playing violin. I'm not particularly good at it, but it's something I enjoy doing. Now, I also really like fixing things and seeing, taking them apart and seeing how they're made. So, I came across this violin on Craigslist. And it has a crack here, right by the tailpiece. And it's a crack here, I'm not sure if that one's been fixed already, and a couple of cracks. So, I am going to be brave and try to take this apart. Now, I only paid $30 for this. I think it's in good shape. It would be worth well more than that, but fixing a crack and having it opened up, having a violin opened up, is not cheap. It'll cost, you know, a couple hundred bucks for somebody to do it. So, if this violin is worth a couple hundred dollars in good shape, then suddenly you're ending up with about a wash. I don't know how much this is worth. It's a Stainer, S-T-A-I-N-E-R, Steiner, Stainer, Stenner, Stainer, I don't know. But I t had the tension off the strings, because if you do have a crack in your violin, keeping tension on the strings is obviously not great for it. So I'm going to take the strings off, take the bridge off, take the chin rest off. So there we have one naked violin. It looks like there might also be another crack on the top here. That open? Yeah, there's another crack right down the middle. It looks like it was where this is a two-piece top. It looks like that, that seam where they're put together opened up. So let's see. This piece of leather here to protect it. And I've got my highly modified potty knife. I carefully rounded all the edges on this so there's no sharp edges. It is still a little bit rusty, but it should still work. We'll see if it if it does or not. Yeah, it's going in there. That's a little nerve-wracking. Interesting, the inside is really unfinished. The, the wood here has little um, little fuzzies all over it. They also skipped putting blocks in the corners. Some violins have blocks in the corners here like that, um, but there's no blocks in the corners. Don't know what that means as far as quality of violin or the sound. See, let's look at the top. Let's 
So this center seam, well, there's a crack here and a crack there. Then there's the crack at the tail piece we saw before. The crack there. And then this center, that is down here. So the center, so this was a two piece top, so the center glue joint is separating. You see the pencil lines on there from where they marked it out to lay it on. The base bar has some sort of sculpting going on to it. They uh, weren't real careful about their glue. I don't know if that really matters for how it sounds, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, if they have everything absolutely perfect inside, you think that maybe it was higher quality, but um, well, it certainly is neat seeing the inside of one of these in person. It's so lightweight, you know, there's everything so thin. Also got some dust bunnies in there, that's probably helped the sound. So I'm working on getting the crack closed up on this violin top. Now I've got these special clamps, which I ordered online that cost more than the violin, like three times more than the violin. But anyways, um, this is about learning stuff, not about being actually practical, because anyhow. Um, so this crack here is the one I'm trying to close up right now. And you see it's closed up by the, where the neck is, and it's closed down here. So this part here is almost like the top bulged up. So I'm going to clamp it some and then probably put something underneath the clamp to try to push that down there and close that up and see if I can get this crack to close up. And then I'm going to loosen up all the clamping, um, smear that with glue, and uh, I might see how the glue is going in, but I might run a vacuum cleaner along the back to pull the glue into the crack and then put the clamps back on. But I want to make sure I can get the, the crack to close up first. Okay, so now these cracks here are opening up, so I don't want to do what I'm doing, because that's not... Can they really open up? Yeah, they did. So this crack just is not closing up with pressure inward. So now I've got it's cracked all the way up. I don't know if that's good or bad, but now I'm trying to get um, the joint cleaned up because I think now it should go back together a little bit more. So I'm offsetting a little bit then scraping the joint to get any stuff that might be impeding it from closing up out. So I've actually preheated the wood a little bit, so it's like 70 something degrees. So now I'm going to try putting on the glue. Well that didn't work gelled up on me. It'd be quicker. So I'm ready to try gluing this crack again. The first time it was uh, the glue really gelled up really quickly so I've got it a lot warmer in the shop today. I've got the uh, wood stove cranking. It's probably over 80 degrees in here so I'm a little bit toasty. Um, 
but the crack closes up pretty good with the clamp. I'm gonna set it apart, paint on, use a brush to paint on the glue so it goes on quicker, and then I can clamp quicker and get everything set up quicker. On this side, I span the crack with painter's tape. That way I can be a little bit messy with putting the glue on from that side, and I won't have to peel it off the finish. It'll be right on the painter's tape. So that's my plan. So my plan is to offset it like so. Paint in the glue, close it back up, clamp it, and be ready to go. So, let's see, my glue's at 130 degrees. I also decided that putting it on the wood stove is better than the camp stove. Uh, I need the wood stove running anyways to keep it toasty warm in here. So, all right. On your mark, get set, go. It's gelling already, wow, so you, got to, you do have to be really quick with this stuff. So I'm going to clean it off, clean the excess gelled glue off. Because this glue joint still isn't great. It's not perfectly closed up, so I'm going to put a row of cleats along there to get it to seal up better. I'm going to do the same thing for this back crack. Second one clamped, glued and clamped. I didn't get the best glue joint here. It's offset a little bit, but I think it's fine. Let's see. Yeah, that one's better. This one you won't see. It's under the fingerboard. I don't know. It would be nicer if those glue, those were more coplanar, but I'm gonna work with what you ended up with. So. I did see a thing where you put a clamp in here to clamp the two top two halves together and I probably should have done that but I didn't have the right type of clamp for it. I was going to use this one but it didn't seem like it worked all that well. But anywho, so I guess I'm going to let this dry. There are more cracks here, here, and back here. This is the first one that I noticed there. And then you can see this was built up in the past. It's got some, some padding on it. So I'm going to figure out how to get the top to sit nice and flat down on the, on the body. So I have the top glued back together again. These, these I just glued. But the center thing, the center joint, I put in little cleats along here. I don't know if they're really necessary, but I figured it cracked once, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to do again. I didn't do a great job at getting the two halves lined up. They're pretty darn close, but really I didn't have a good method to clamp. Um, but it's close enough. And it extra cleats here because that's where it was further apart than less down here. I actually went and visited a local violin maker who's really actually knows what he's doing and he seemed to think that I hadn't done anything too terrible yet, and um, this is not particularly high quality violin. I mean, it's not terrible, but the bass bar is a little bit rough, and there's gobs of glue and whatever else. He also pointed out that this area here is a little bit lighter, so it looks like somebody worked it and thinned it out in that area after it was made, and actually probably here too. Looks like that was thinned out. So, yeah. 
Looks like somebody gave it a tune-up a while ago. This was obviously done a while ago too, that crack. So I'm ready to start gluing the top back on. So one thing the violin maker I, I checked with or I checked in with suggested was gluing to sections at a time because to glue the whole thing it's pretty likely that the glue is going to gel up or cause problems before I actually get it all clamped in place because I'm not very fast at this sort of thing. But I've got my clamps all preset. My plan is I'm going to put these two clamps on and then also these two at the very end because I don't want any section where it's being held apart by dried glue. So I'm going to put these clamps on, clamp the very ends, and then I'll take off the end clamps and spread it apart, glue the next section, and so on. So I'll be able to do it in sections and always keeping it clamped. So yeah, anyways, that's the plan. I'm going to get started. So this violin is back together again. I need to get it tuned so I can play it and whatever else. But it seemed like I had a successful repair. This was the initial crack that I saw, but then there was one underneath the fingerboard and one underneath the tailpiece that I didn't see. And in case this isn't blindingly obvious from watching this video, um, don't use this as a tutorial for how to fix a violin. This is me learning. But I also wanted to encourage people to go ahead and try something you're not entirely sure about and experiment. Like, there's lots of great inf information out there on how to fix stuff and I had never taken apart a violin before but after watching some videos I was able to get this apart and back together again being careful, you know, following directions using the right materials so, you know, I think I did an okay job. Um, when if someone takes this part and looks at it, I want them to think, hey, an amateur fixed this, not, wow, a, an idiot fixed it. Like, I didn't use, you know, West System epoxy or anything. I used the right materials. I tried to do, you know, tried to follow the conventions for using hide glue and using the cleats and nothing crazy. So, all that information's out there, and I just tried to learn and figure out how to fix this. Whether or not I did a great job, well, it doesn't matter a whole lot. I mean, one thing I messed up on a little bit is getting the level of the two halves of the top. They are not perfectly aligned, but they're also underneath the tailpiece and the fingerboard, so you can't really tell. And whoever fixed this crack here also didn't have them perfectly aligned. So my work on this violin is comparable to the people who have worked on it in the past. So anyways, I'm going to get it tuned up and I'll I'll see how well it plays. So I'm really excited to to see how this how this violin sounds and plays compared to my other one. I should note I didn't show how I put in the sound post. I think it's about in the right spot. It might be a little tiny bit too far back, but it seems like it fits in okay. I bought this sound post tool and as far as I'm concerned it was useless because um, even though this is really thin metal, when you put it around the sound post, it wouldn't fit through the F hole. So that's that's not very useful. So I had this one from before that I made when um, when my sound post fell. And so actually I was able to use this one. Drops in, sneaks in through, and so just a piece of bent welding rod that's flattened over. So this actually worked out okay. Um, I think I'm going to get one of those real ones with a hook like this. You stick the sound post on, then the other side is a flat plate with some little bumps in it for like adjusting the sound post around. Because right now, 
there's no, I can't really move it once it's in there. It just sort of goes in one spot.